Hey, Courtney. So it looks like you did do a package. You have your links, you have your fonts. Um, so here's your INDD file. Let's open that up. So if we take a look at this, this is looking pretty good. I would, I would capitalize every, and I would maybe like add some punctu punctuation. I would put a return here too, maybe, and just center this and move this up. I would use a different font besides Minion Pro to, um, let's get these, let's center this box, text box with the paragraph. And let's center these using the alignment panel and try and get push shift and get everything selected and use the alignment panel to put them all kind of and i want to kind of center it inside of here let's move this logo if i can get a hold of it right what happened here and there's some kind of extra space here so i'm going to push delete a couple times to get this to shrink down so I can get a hold of this because these are pretty big text boxes and they're making it hard to grab other things. I'm trying to get that centered a little bit better. I would take the um, stroke off here with this box. This could use the background removed, this um, fine. So let's do a control click on that and edit with. You can do it right here or you can do it here. Control click or right click, edit with. So you can do it within the links panel. You can also do it right on the image within your document, edit with. And we want to do it with Photoshop. And we want to unlock our layer first. And then you can see the remove background under quick actions in the properties panel. But you do need to be in window workspace essentials to be able to see this. So that remove background button is in Photoshop. It doesn't work very well for this one, so let's command Z that. I'll show you a different way. Select color range. Click here on the color we want to select, which is the white. Push OK. And let's push delete on our keyboard. So that got rid of it. So let's do a file save as. So we need to save this as a different file type besides a JPEG because we need to just preserve the transparent background. JPEGs do not support transparency. So we need the right file type for transparency. PSDs are great for transparency. So let's go into your here, here, and let's name this Vine PT, PSD, which is a photo, Photoshop format, which is a great file type for transparency. So let's put save. I'm going to replace it because I did this earlier. Push OK. And let's go back into InDesign and we will hook this up. So we need to relink it. So go to the one up here. Don't go to one of this, this one or this one. Go to this one. It'll, it will replace both instances with the PSD we just saved out today at 212 to 218. So open and there you go. So you get a nice transparent background on that. You could even make this bigger with the free transform tool pushing shift. Yeah, you could make it a little bit bigger so it's kind of going off. Maybe not quite that much, but maybe something like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's looking better. I kind of like this where every stem tells a story. You might want to take this one off and just simplify Oops. Yeah, simplify that. Oops, I didn't know there's two in there. Maybe we just want to make this really simple on this side. Um, you have your information here. There is your your template is showing up. Oops. So if we go to layers, we can turn the eyeball off in the template. And let's see, I would say here, pushing option eight or alt, I believe on a Windows, will give you this dot. Um, and then option eight or alt eight to get the dot. If you want it in one simple line here. This has an Adobe stock watermark. I would suggest doing a control click on this and editing with Photoshop. We want to make sure it's in CMYK. I might have forgot to tell you to do that on the Vine too. You want to make it CMYK. Unlock that and let's try to remove background on this. That worked actually pretty good. 
There's still some of it left, so let's do select color range. Get that white selected. Do not work. Try again, and then delete, and D to deselect. I don't know, that didn't work super good. Hmm. Let's just do a select color range from the very get-go without the remove background button. I've, I've command Z'd it to before we used the remove background. Let's do select color range, get that, and delete. And then let's do a command D to deselect, and let's use the eraser to erase that part. I'm missing part of the flowers, but, you know, that's okay, I guess. Um, save this, and then we can link that um, with our links panel. Link, I'm not quite sure where I even save this, mostly. Um, Somewhere. There we go. So that looks okay. I mean, parts of the roses are gone, but it, it, it's harder to see. So, and then let's take off the stroke on this box. So, and I would put a period here. So, make sure you have some. Um, I would make sure that you have social media icons. So you can go online, search for Facebook icon, go to images in Google, find a, a good Facebook icon. Like this one's, these ones are nice because there's three of them together. So you can get those downloaded. I, I brought them in, they're, they're a JPEG file. Um, and you can just file place those in, crop them with the black arrow. So I've cropped out the Twitter logo because that's not really relevant. And then I did my control click, edit with, Photoshop, and I saved it as CMYK. You can see it in the links panel, it's CMYK now. So that is kind of what I would suggest to you. I moved everything up to, to make room for that. I think that's all I noticed that you need. You have your slogan, you have your contact information, you have your logo, and you have um, your name. So I would say, yeah, I would say changing up the fonts a little bit more with the Myriad Pro. Um, and then bringing in some social media icons would be good. So anyway, hopefully this is helpful. We'll talk to you later. Bye.